Hello everyone. Today I am going to introduce a new topic, supramolecular chemistry. It is one of the today's fastest growing discipline crossing a range of subjects from biological chemistry to material science and shows great potential in the fields of catalysis, drug delivery, biotherapy, electrochemical sensor, self-healing materials. Then what do you mean by supramolecular chemistry? Supramolecular chemistry is the subject of the association of two or more chemical species held together by intermolecular forces such as electrostatic interaction, hydrogen bonding, Van der Waals forces, etc., which could lead to organized entities of higher complexity. That is, supramolecular chemistry is an interdisciplinary field of science involving the chemical, physical, and biological features of molecular assemblies having a greater complexity than the individual molecules themselves. It is the study of the structures and functions of the supermolecules that result from the intermolecular binding interactions of two or more chemical entities in an organized manner. That is, supramolecular chemistry is defined as chemistry beyond the molecule. It is the chemistry of molecular assemblies and of the intermolecular bond. It deals with organized entities that result from the association of two or more chemical species held together by intermolecular forces. Then what is the difference between traditional chemistry and supramolecular chemistry? Traditional chemistry focuses on the covalent bond, while supramolecular chemistry examines the weaker and reversible non-covalent interactions between the molecule. Non-covalent interactions include electrostatic interactions such as hydrogen bonding, dipole-dipole interaction, iod-dipole interaction, hydrophobic interaction such as Van der Waals forces, pi pi interactions and dispersion interactions. The dimensions of supramolecular assemblies can range from nanometers to micrometers. The supramolecular chemistry also known as information science. Then why it is called information science? The instruction set for the creation of a large complex assembly is contained within it is constituent components. We know supramolecular chemistry deals with the supermolecules. Then what are the examples for supermolecules? Nature provides the most spectacular examples of supramolecular chemistry. This include enzyme substrate complex, the DNA structure, it is intricate packing and replication mechanisms, protein-protein interactions, etc. We are well known about the enzyme substrate complex. The enzyme substrate complex is a temporary molecule formed when an enzyme comes into perfect contact with its substrate. Without its substrate, an enzyme is a slightly different shape. The substrate causes a conformational change when the substrate enters the active site. The active site is the area of the enzyme capable of forming weak bonds with the substrate. This conformational change can force two or more substrate molecules together or split individual molecules into smaller parts. We know the enzyme substrate complex is extremely important for a number of reasons. Firstly, the enzyme substrate complex is only temporary. That is, once the substrate has changed, it can no longer bind to the enzyme. The products are released and the enzyme is ready for another substrate molecule. This is an example for supermolecules. Another example for supermolecule is DNA. DNA that is deoxyribonucleic acid is a molecule composed of two polynucleotide chains that coil around each other to form a double helix carrying genetic instructions for the development, functioning, growth and reproduction of all known organisms and many viruses. The polynucleotides are composed of simpler 
monomeric units called nucleotide. Each nucleotide is composed of one of four nitrogen containing nucleobases. These are cytosine, guanine, adenine or thymine. A sugar called deoxyribose and a phosphate group. The nucleotides are joined to one another in a chain by covalent bonds known as phosphodiester linkage between the sugar of one nucleotide and the phosphate of the next resulting in an alternate sugar phosphate backbone. The nitrogenous bases of the two separate polynucleotide strands are bound together according to base pairing rules that is adenine combines with the thymine and cytosine combines with guanine with hydrogen bonds to make double stranded DNA. The complementary nitrogenous bases are divided into two groups, pyrimidines and purines. In DNA, the pyrimidines are thymine and cytosine. The purines are adenine and guanine. The two strands of DNA run in opposite directions to each other and are thus anti-parallel. This is the structure of DNA. Another example for supermolecule is ferritin. Ferritin is a protein that stores iron. Ferritin is assembled from many smaller repeated subunits that contain precise information for their correct integration into the larger structure. Then, what was the importance of supramolecular assemblies? It demonstrates cooperativity which affect both the stability of the cluster and the mechanism of its formation and rearrangement. Detailed mechanistic studies of supramolecular assemblies are important not only for understanding the self-assembly processes but also for designing assemblies for specific applications. Supramolecular chemistry has found many applications. In particular, molecular self-assembly processes have been applied to the development of new materials. Large structures can be readily accessed using bottom-up synthesis as they are composed of small molecules requiring fewer steps to synthesize. Thus, most of the bottom-up approaches to nanotechnology are based on supramolecular chemistry. A major application of supramolecular chemistry is the design and understanding of catalyst and catalysis. Non-covalent interactions are extremely important in catalysis, binding reactants into conformations suitable for reaction and lowering the transition state energy of reaction. Moreover, design based on supramolecular chemistry has led to numerous applications in the creation of functional biomaterials. Supramolecular biomaterials afford a number of modular and generalizable platforms with tunable mechanical, chemical, and biological properties. This include systems based on supramolecular assembly of peptides, host guest macrocycles, high affinity hydrogen bonding, and metal ligand interactions. Supramolecular chemistry has been used to demonstrate computation functions on a molecular scale. In many cases, Photonic or chemical signals have been used in these components, but electrical interfacing of these units has been shown by supramolecular signal transduction devices. That is, the focus is on application of this macromolecular system to other chemistry problems, selective substrate binding, trapping reactive intermediate, or protecting unstable species influencing reaction chemistry within host cavities or creating new nano devices. These are the various applications of supramolecular chemistry. Important concepts by supramolecular chemistry include molecular self-assembly, molecular folding, molecular recognition, host guest chemistry, mechanically interlocked molecular architectures. Firstly, we can discuss about molecular self-assembly. It is the process by which molecules adopt a defined arrangement without guidance or management from an outside source. There are two types of self-assembly. These are intramolecular self-assembly and intermolecular self-assembly. 
the intermolecular self assembly is commonly known as molecular self assembly whereas the intramolecular self assembly is known as folding the molecular self assembly refers to aggregation of particles into an organized structure without external assistance that is it refers to the spontaneous formation of organized structures from many discrete components that interact with one another directly and or indirectly through their environment for example the formation of colloids bimolecular condensates micellae vesicles liquid crystal phases surfactant molecules liposome formation in an aqueous solution is an example for molecular assembly liposomes are small vesicles made up of one or more lipid bilayers most liposomes contain an aqueous core and are both hydrophilic and hydrophobic in nature when phospholipids are mixed with the water they spontaneously rearrange themselves to form the lowest free energy configuration that is the hydrophobic regions find ways to remove themselves from water while the hydrophilic regions interact with the water another example for molecular assembly is an emulsion of oil in water here the surfactant molecule oil soluble tail project into the oil while the water soluble ends remain in contact with water phase another example for molecular assembly is snow crystals which is found in nature do you know how are snowflakes formed a snowflake begins to form when an extremely cold water droplet freezes onto a pollen or dust particle in the sky this creates an ice crystal as the ice crystal falls to the ground water vapor freezes onto the primary crystal building new crystals the six arms of the snowflake the ice crystals that make up snowflakes are symmetrical or patterned because they reflect the internal order of the crystal's water molecule as they arrange themselves in predetermined spaces to form a six-sided snowflake that is a snow crystal is a natural blend of science and art next we can discuss about molecular folding folding is the process by which a molecule assumes it is shape or conformation the process can be described as intramolecular self assembly where the molecule is directed to form a specific shape through non covalent interactions such as hydrogen bonding metal coordination hydrophobic forces van der waals forces pi pi interactions or electrostatic effects example for molecular folding is protein folding it is the physical process by which a polypeptide folds into it is characteristic and functional three dimensional structure from a random coil each protein exists as an unfolded polypeptide or random coil when the translated from a sequence of mrna to a linear chain of amino acids the primary structure is the sequence of amino acid that makes up the polypeptide chain the secondary structure which can take the form of an alpha helix or beta pleated sheet is maintained by hydrogen bond between amino acids in different regions of the original polypeptide strand the tertiary structure occurs as a result of further folding and bonding of the secondary structure the quaternary structure occurs as a result of interactions between two or more tertiary subunits next we can discuss about molecular recognition it refers to the specific interaction between two or more molecules through non covalent bonding such as hydrogen bonding metal coordination hydrophobic effects van der waals forces pi pi interactions halogen bonding etc molecular recognition examples include enzyme selectivity where an enzyme binds only with a selected group of molecules due to molecular size and non covalent molecular force constraints here 
the substrate entering active site of enzyme and to form enzyme substrate complex. The enzyme changes shape slightly as substrate binds, then it converted into enzyme product complex, then product leaving active site of enzyme. This is an example for molecular recognition. The molecules that do the recognizing are called host molecules and those that are recognized are known as guest molecules. Therefore, molecular recognition chemistry is sometimes called host guest chemistry. Next, we can discuss about mechanically interlocked molecular architectures. They are molecules that are connected as a consequence of their topology. This connection of molecules is analogous to keys on a keychain loop. The keys are not directly connected to the keychain loop, but they cannot be separated without breaking the loop. On the molecular level, the interlocked molecules cannot be separated without breaking the covalent bonds that comprise the conjoined molecules. This is referred to as a mechanical bond. For example, catenin, protexane. These are the examples for mechanically interlocked molecular architectures. Today we have discussed about supramolecular chemistry and it is important concepts which include molecular self-assembly, molecular folding, molecular recognition, host guest chemistry, mechanically interlocked molecular architectures. In the next class, we will discuss about non-covalent bond interactions. Thank you.